this week to be closer to China? Why has President Xi Jinping made poverty alleviation a priority? How does China plan to eliminate extreme poverty throughout the country? What are the challenges, the obstacles? How to make China's anti-poverty campaign sustainable? This week, be closer to China. Has President Xi Jinping made poverty alleviation a signature priority of his leadership? Over the past five years, in his more than 50 inspection tours across the country, he has stressed poverty alleviation almost everywhere. He has visited 14 poverty stricken areas with special difficulties and encouraged party cadres to visit impoverished areas regularly and interact with local people. China's national goal is to realize a moderately prosperous society by 2020. And she asserts that China cannot be a moderately prosperous society if any of its citizens continue to live in extreme poverty. So what is President Xi's grand vision? How does China plan to eliminate extreme poverty in less than three years? What are the challenges, the obstacles, which organizations are involved? And even if successful, even if all extreme poverty is eliminated by 2020, what happens after that? Just because a family's income has been raised just above the extreme poverty line for one year hardly makes them moderately prosperous. How then to make China's poverty alleviation campaign sustainable? And not to forget, how reliable is the data? When we follow poverty alleviation, we cannot get any closer to China. Since adopting its reform and opening up policy, China has made remarkable progress. Still, the government faces difficulties and challenges, particularly during these times of social transformation and transition. A rising polarization of wealth can lead to social stress, undermining social stability. Worse, the inequality gap between cities and countryside is increasing. While income percentage growth increased faster in rural areas, absolute inequality between rural and urban incomes also increased. China has been working to bridge the gap between haves and have-nots. In 2017, nearly 13 million people were brought above the poverty line, reducing the total population living in extreme poverty to about 30 million. The remaining poor live largely in 592 counties across the country. The Chinese government has allocated more than 200 billion yuan, that is over 30 billion U.S. dollars, to keep pace with the needs of poverty relief. In addition to providing poverty relief funds, the government dispatched about 800,000 officials to the front line on poverty relief missions, officials like Yao Hai. This 27-year-old was dispatched to Daijing Village by the county government to work as the village first secretary. His main job is to persuade the remaining eight households who have not yet moved to the town to change their minds. One could be forgiven for speculating that this experience on the front line of poverty alleviation work would become a major boost in Yao Hai's career. But for now, what's on Yao Hai's mind is anything but his future promotion. Following Yao Hai, I visited three households, which still include elders. Dark rooms, primitive thatch fillings, run-down plank walls, these are the houses situated in the deep valleys of karst landform. One would be surprised to see anybody still living in these conditions. For these villagers, however, these houses and lands represent generations of memories, and memories are roots. Though their children had already migrated to cities to make a living, they themselves are still reluctant to move. Their ancestors are buried here. Some spouses have already died here. According to Yao Hai, relocations cannot be coerced. Force is not permitted. 
His job is to watch over villages' needs and concerns, fulfilling his mission in improving their lives through poverty household identification, rolling out tailored measures to each household, and completing all tasks set forth by the county government. Yao Hai and his work exemplify what the government calls targeted poverty alleviation. By targeted poverty alleviation, we aim to effectively allocate the limited resources among target recipients to address their special needs. And what is called for is no simple strategy, but a series of packaged plans that are specifically tailored to the poverty problems. First of all, we need to accurately identify the 17 million poor out of the near 1 billion rural people across the country. Such a grand project is a bit like fishing a needle out of the sea. In order to complete the mission of accurate identification of some 70 million out of 1 billion, we need innovation in organization, identification methods, as well as in other aspects. Toward this end, the local governments across China have spent a lot of time and efforts in trying different ways from 2014 to 2016. Where are the poor? The poor are in the villages. After reform and opening up, the educated, skilled villagers have basically all migrated to the cities, which is also thanks to the rapid development of urbanization. Those who are left behind are mostly incapable of finding their own ways out. Some cannot speak Mandarin and may run into communication problems in the cities. Some are not only in lack of capabilities and skills, but also in lack of ideas. They're so used to being poor and being assisted by the government. They dare not dream about a better life. They have no confidence in themselves and have been trapped in the mentality that they have been poor since their forefathers' time, and it is something in their fate to be poor. So what shall we do? There is a lack of talent. No one is to lead and get the poor organized. Leaders are needed for industrial development. So we second task forces to those 128,000 poverty-stricken villages. For each and every one of them, we send a delegation of three to five civil servants from government departments of above the county level or from state-owned enterprises for assistance. They're paid out of the national fiscal budget and sent to get the poor out of poverty by helping them make their development plans, liberate their thinking, and innovate new ways to implement the five major methods of poverty alleviation on a fair and just footing. All these are what we refer to as hard measures. I think such poverty alleviation efforts are unprecedented in China's history and in the history of other countries around the world. They have demonstrated the senses of responsibility of the CPC and the Chinese government. It is our historic responsibility, and we have our faith and determination to fulfill it well on schedule. In the meanwhile, large batches of young cadres from the county, municipal, provincial, and central organizations have made their way to the villages. Over the years, the total number has reached 2.8 million, with 800,000 still living in villages and performing their roles. Together with those who have come back, there are altogether 2.8 million who have profound understanding about the rural areas and about poverty in China. They understand from their own experiences that apart from the prosperity in metropolitan cities like Beijing, Shanghai and Guangzhou, there are also places in China where poverty is pervasive and serious. This will do good to their growth and their improvement of capabilities throughout their lifetime. In particular, they will cultivate a sense of devotion to the county and the poor and they will develop a bond with the poor public that may last for their entire life. In order to carry out an effective poverty alleviation program, it is, um, it is the responsibility to work at the very local levels. I was there, I was there literally yesterday, the day before, in local villages that are, that are very poor, and you see officials working with the, the villages one by one. Uh, how do you motivate the uh, officials, uh, maybe from a county level or, or provincial level, to go down to the poorest level uh, to work with individuals? Uh, what, is, what does it take to, uh, you know, elevate their spirit or to focus their spirits uh, that this is an important task? Because it's certainly not, it's not a uh, glorious task. 
um, uh, but it, it needs to be done. So what is the motivation uh, uh, practices? Over the years of learning lessons from others, say by referring to experiences of the development programs in China designed by the World Bank, we have already developed measures to monitor, examine, and evaluate the work of staff working in poor villages. It includes several aspects. First, at the county and township level, we set up systems of support for poverty alleviation management departments. To give you an example, the cadres will keep records of their daily work in the village, such as what activities they have performed, etc., and then report to the township and county. Second, superior officials will inspect the villages from time to time and ask the aid recipients to learn about the performance of the cadre working in village. The questions go like these. Is he visiting the poor households every day and what problems is he working on? For such a conversation is also carried out with village countries. Third, the recipient's satisfaction is a very important indicator in China's poverty alleviation. That is to say, if the poor are not satisfied with the cadres assigned there to help, they cannot be lifted out of poverty because their problems cannot be effectively solved. Therefore, with multiple sources of information, we can evaluate the performance of our cadres and staff in an objective and reliable manner. Poverty alleviation is a daunting challenge. Throughout history, throughout the world, every country strives to alleviate poverty. Now, China vows to alleviate poverty by 2020. Within three years, China must lift the final 40 million people above the poverty line. What's unique about China's plan that it's called targeted poverty alleviation? How does targeted work? What are its problems, its secrets? Can other countries learn from China's experience? I'm investigating China's targeted poverty alleviation. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, bringing you Closer to China. China launched large-scale poverty relief programs in 1986. In the same year, 32-year-old Xi Jinping was working in Zhengding County in Hubei province, serving at the grassroots level as deputy county party secretary. In Zhengding, he wrote to more than 100 experts and scholars, inviting them to give advice and counsel for the county's development. Two years later, Xi Jinping became secretary of the Prefectural Party Committee in Ningda, Fujian province. Some of his speeches and articles from this period are published in his book, Up and Out of Poverty. As she writes, I worked hard during the two years in Ningda Prefecture, along with the people and party members there. I always felt a sense of unease. Poverty alleviation is an immense undertaking that requires the efforts of several generations. I did not fulfill my aspirations for reform and opening up in Ningda. The feeling that I still owe a debt to that region tugs my heart. It is difficult to forget. Over the next 24 years, this county official worked his way up to China's presidency and brought his dream of poverty alleviation to the center of China's political life. In November 2015, the CPC Central Committee and the State Council, the party and the government, jointly issued its decision on winning the fight against poverty. In his work report to the 19th Party Congress, Xi Jinping encouraged the whole party to continue to implement targeted poverty reduction and alleviation measures and ensure that by 2020, all rural residents living below the current poverty line will have been lifted out of poverty. The fight against poverty is a human fight. Virtually every country throughout history has been concerned about poverty. Why then is the anti-poverty campaign in China, the so-called targeted uh, poverty alleviation uh, program, so important to President Xi Jinping that he has made it of highest national priority? To make everyone lead a happy life is the common desire of all human beings. To reduce poverty is a daunting task for all countries, especially the underdeveloped ones. And this task is of special importance to China. Why? 
China is the most populous country in the world, whose development lagged behind for long and whose impoverished population is relatively large. Since the founding of New China, the CPC and the Chinese government tried to eradicate poverty by developing the socialist system. And we have partially achieved the goal. Entering the new era, China has to accomplish its Chinese dream and build a moderately prosperous society in an all-around way. It must not leave the poor behind. Actually, before the 18th National Congress, or specifically back in 2012, China had a total of nearly 100 million poor people. According to national standards, the poor recognized by the Chinese government numbered 99.89 million at the end of 2012, quite a large group. So the reason China attaches such great importance to poverty alleviation has to do with, first, our national conditions, and second, our task of building a comprehensively well-off society. In the meantime, undeniably, the work style and characteristics of the leader has also played a role. Actually, top leaders in China are very concerned about poverty, but compared with his predecessors, General Secretary Xi Jinping has exerted even more effort. He has experienced working in poor villages, counties and districts, and after his term as General Secretary, he visited all the major poverty-stricken areas in China. He has a lot of policies and ideas regarding precision poverty alleviation. Thanks to his work experience in the past and his understanding of the lessons China has learned, as well as the best practices he has witnessed over the years. Therefore, I think General Secretary Xi Jinping has earnestly led and guided the whole process of poverty alleviation in China while putting forward the idea, witnessing its implementation and coming up with improvements. What is it about the period of time uh, when Xi Jinping was, uh, uh, became party secretary after the 18th Party Congress, and particularly now with Xi Jinping thought, that gives a new dimension to poverty alleviation in China? When Xi Jinping took office as CPC General Secretary at the 18th National Congress, many fundamental changes took place. The most prominent ones are reflected in his series of new opinions and ideas on poverty alleviation, which altogether form his strategic thinking on poverty alleviation and development. Xi Jinping's strategic thinking on poverty alleviation and development specifies that poverty alleviation and development is the essential requirement of socialism and the most daunting task in building a comprehensively well-off society. It also covers the ideas of precision, science-based and content-based poverty alleviation, as well as the ideas of two institutional advantages, the building of a community of shared destiny for human beings free from poverty and others. They offered a new meaning to poverty alleviation and development in China's new era and were a legacy of past leaders' thoughts on poverty alleviation. At the recent concluded 19th Party Congress, Xi Jinping also made new plans for our path ahead at the critical stage toward building a comprehensively well-off society and for the coming 30 years, clear guidelines were presented to promote the country's modernization and address problems in poor households and regions so as to attract common prosperity. I believe such guidance is not only beneficial for China's fight against poverty, but also valuable for the world, as it represents the China Plan with the pooled wisdom of China. In 2013, while visiting a poor county in central China's Hunan province, President Xi first proposed the concept of targeted poverty reduction and alleviation, tracking precisely every poor person and giving each family customized programs. He said, targeted measures should be based on practical situations and empty slogans should be avoided. Targeted means more individualized procedures and programs with the policies to support them, including standardized definitions of poverty, identification criteria of poor people, and customized plans and programs to bring them out of poverty. In implementing this policy, the party and the government, a top-down system, is second to none 
on establishing a unified coordination network for poverty alleviation because of its special advantages. In the last 15 years of the 20th century, China lifted 6.4 million people out of extreme poverty annually. During the first decade of this century, the annual average was 7 million. And from 2012 to 2017, the annual figure doubled to an average of 13 million. China has been moving uh, toward an institutionalization of uh, various aspects of society uh, uh, away from uh, just single human being intervention. So how does the institutionalization of uh, China's policies affect the poverty alleviation program, both currently and, and plans for the future? The fact that China can, within this relatively short period of time, establish a top-down organizing system and task force in poverty alleviation from the central level to the village level in a short period of time. That is to say, it enables effective implementation of our poverty alleviation policies and plans. For instance, in China's roughly 128,000 poor villages, more than a million cadres are assigned there to help. With this rapid establishment of an effective task force that has the organizing ability to ensure implementation of our poverty alleviation plans, poor people can really benefit. China claims that its success in anti-poverty uh, work is uh, dependent upon its, its strong top-down government. So I'd like to understand a little bit how that works in process. On the one hand, the government has various layers, maybe five different levels of government. How do they work together? And then how does the party and the government work? Because China is a party government system, two kinds of organizations that work together. So how, how does the process work from an organizational point of view, party and government? The CPC is the leading party in China, and all important work must be carried out in adherence to its leadership. China has a socialist system and organizes its decisions in a holistic manner. The Central Committee has the capability to appeal and make decisions. Therefore, our institution features coordination at the central level, general responsibility at the provincial level, and specific implementation at the county level. So General Secretary Xi Jinping is at the very top, leading the subordinate five levels of party secretaries in our nationwide anti-poverty campaign. The whole party is mobilized to make an effort. Specifically, we have the General Secretary on top and party secretaries at the provincial, municipal, county, township and the grassroots village levels. All the party secretaries take the lead in their level of poverty alleviation programs. In heavily impoverished areas where the task is grave, party secretaries should focus and look to the general secretary. You have to keep a close watch over the investigations made by the general secretary and follow suit. Otherwise, you will lack sufficient understanding and be held accountable for that. For instance, we now pay much attention to regions in deep poverty, such as southern Xinjiang, Tibet, Liangshan in Sichuan province, and some regions with large ethnic minorities population, in areas with special difficulties. Provinces are given priority at the provincial level and counties at the national level. For key areas of poverty at the national level, we have to follow the requirements of General Secretary Xi Jinping and be detail-oriented in implementing measures. Regarding investment in poverty alleviation and motivation of the resources, China's current political system enables the central government to decide poverty alleviation investment in a fairly rapid manner. To give you an example, in the past several years, the state fiscal budget for poverty alleviation has seen a 40 to 50 percent annual increase. That substantial increase can be quite difficult to reach in congressional discussions in many countries, but fairly easy in China, thanks to our political system. System. In addition, China's governing system can motivate and coordinate relevant government departments to allocate their resources and projects for the benefit of poor areas. Thanks to our system, good practices in poverty alleviation can be quickly applied across the country. Actually, in my memory, we have had many such instances since 1986, when we initiated some small-scale pilot programs for poverty alleviation and witnessed quite effective results, our government used its influence and quickly promoted the practices nationwide to enable all areas in China to benefit from them.
On the basis of partnership assistance at the provincial level, the year before we initiated a program called Hand in Hand Towards Xiao Kang Society between developed counties in the east and the poverty-stricken counties in the west. More than 200 well-off eastern counties reached out to the 400 poor western counties with assistance. Through industrial cooperation and exchanges, you do not go out and distribute money. Well, money is needed, but what matters more is how you allocate the money for the maximum benefit of the East and the West. A lot of things require intervention at the government level. Large-scale relocation programs call for a unified organization of the country. You have to go with the policy. Again, the local government is in charge of implementation, while decision-making is performed at the central level. As for partnership assistance, we have microfinancing, poverty alleviation through photovoltaic development and others. All were decided at the Central Committee and implemented at the local level. Provinces can also implement programs at the provincial level, but the government's presence is required for coordination. All party and government organs have their own liaison offices at the poor regions. Say our Poverty Alleviation Office of the State Council is not very big in size, with only dozens of staff, yet we are responsible for poverty alleviation in two counties. If we fail to accomplish the goal by 2020, I will also be held liable. Besides, as we motivate the government, the party and governments motivate private enterprises. We now have more than 20,000 private companies partnering with poverty-stricken villages to deliver help. This is the most effective way. Those private entrepreneurs themselves have gone through a lot of hardship in their development. Their own reactions in the face of difficulty and their solutions to different problems can be of use as they help those in need. So in our poverty alleviation programs, the party takes the lead and the government calls on different parties and organizes concerted efforts. The leadership of the party serves as the core and the organization of the government provides guidance. China has lifted over 700 million people out of poverty the greatest anti-poverty accomplishment in world history. But still, there are about 30 million people living in extreme poverty. Some are intractably poor, usually due to geographic isolation or personal hardship. How does the central government organize such a massive initiative? Six poverty alleviation systems. Responsibility, policy, investment, motivation, supervision, and assessment. In 22 central and western provinces, the party and the government pledged to eliminate all extreme poverty by 2020. Seeing that poor people and poor areas will enter the moderately prosperous society together with the rest of the country is a solemn promise made by our party, Xi Jinping told the 19th CPC National Congress. He stressed both helping people lift themselves out of poverty and providing the education they need to do so. Those who recognize China's unprecedented poverty alleviation success must also recognize its direct relationship to China's system of one-party rule and a strong command-down government, while all systems of government have trade-offs. Without such strong authority, and the recognition by officials that their careers prosper or falter based on poverty alleviation results, it would not be possible for China to reach its goal of eliminating all extreme poverty by 2020. That's closer to China.